Chris Mira from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. Thanks for joining us. In this Oracle Mobile Cloud service, we're going to look at the requirements of what you need to do on the MCS server side to build a custom API that is compatible with the client side data offline and sync capabilities. So in the previous episodes, we gave you a broad overview of the different components that are needed to make use of the data offline and sync capabilities on your mobile client. And in those episodes, we describe what and where those components exist, namely on the mobile client itself and the server side of Oracle Mobile Cloud Service. In this episode, we'll now dig into what you need to do to build an MCS server side custom API that is compatible with the data offline and sync capabilities. So you might remember in the previous episodes, we already listed out the broad tasks in order to enable the server side to work with the data offline sync capabilities. First, you need to decide which custom APIs on the server side you want to enable for data offline and sync. Then of course, you need to actually create the custom APIs in mobile cloud service. And again, we covered that in a previous episode too. However, for custom APIs that integrate with the data offline and sync capabilities, as you are the developer of that API, you need to also make sure that the payloads and HP headers returned by the custom API are compliant with the data offline and sync functions. And it's these requirements that is the focus of this episode. We'll cover storage APIs in a later video. Now, in considering custom APIs, I'm 100% sure that you've watched all the previous episodes on what an MCS custom API is. And you know that custom APIs are made up of an interface, that is a REST API, which exposes to the mobile client the collections and objects as endpoints that the custom API provides and the custom API's node implementation in code, which does the grunt work of the API under the covers. Now, you can use custom APIs without using them for data offline and sync, and you're pretty much free to do whatever you want. But if you want to make a custom API compatible for data offline and sync with the mobile client SDK, then there's some questions you need to consider. The first question is via the custom API REST API, will you be returning collections or individual objects or both to the mobile client to cache? If you choose to return a collection, then you will need to provide a get method of the form forward slash mobile forward slash custom slash your API name slash some path then the collection name. In returning that collection to the client, you must also include a HP header value of Oracle Mobile Sync resource type equals collection, which the client uses to work out what payload it is receiving. And in talking about the payload, it must match a prescribed format required by the data offline and sync functions on the client side. You cannot return any collection payload with any structure. It must match the prescribed format. Now we'll describe that payload structure in just a minute. In addition to the get collection endpoint, you must also build a REST API that will return mobile custom your API name, some path, the collection name, then an ID to return individual objects within the collection. This additional API is used under the covers by an internal mechanism of the data offline and sync functions called batch sync that optimizes how the sync functionality works. Batch sync is an implementation detail we don't document at this stage. But to say, you must create endpoints for both the object and the collection, otherwise the batch sync will fail. In a similar fashion to the collection API, you must return the HTTP header Oracle Mobile Sync resource type, but this time set to item. In addition, the payload containing the actual object data must comply to a predefined payload structure required by the client side offline and sync capabilities. Again, we'll cover that payload requirement in just a moment. The other question you need to ask yourself on the mobile client where you're caching all this data is, will you allow the user to create, update, or delete any of that cached data? If yes, eventually that data needs to be synchronized back to MCS. So in order to support the create or update or delete operations, then you need to also implement the custom API on the server side, a REST endpoint to accept a post on the collection object for create, a put for the update, and a delete for the delete client side operation. Now, if you think about it and what you already know about REST, this pretty much makes sense, right? If we allow the user to create, update and delete data on the client and we want to sync it back to the server via REST, of course we need to implement the put, post and delete methods of the REST server side implementation. The only difference being is the data offline and sync API is very strict on that REST interface. 
it requires the endpoints match the predefined pattern that it can predict. Now, it's possible you don't want to return a collection of objects, but instead just a single object. In this case, it's pretty much the same URL patterns that we saw before for the collections, but of course you drop the parent collection endpoint out of the path. You just provide an endpoint where you supply the object ID rather than the collection name. And if you want to support the ability for client side create, update and deletes, you must also provide the server side post put and delete endpoints too. Now in describing these compliant REST API endpoints for the data offline and sync capabilities, we said not only do you need to, well, set up a bunch, a bunch of REST endpoints to a compliant format, but the server side response must include HP headers and a standard payload structure that the data offline capabilities can use. Let's explore that right now. If we return to our initial collection endpoint, imagine we're returning a collection of, say, weather observations for various cities around the world, including Beijing and Sydney. So possibly each city might have a JSON object containing a payload like the following. City Beijing, current temperature is 4 degrees Celsius, and Sydney's current temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. To make this payload compliant with the data offline and sync capabilities, it must take the following form, where the collection's individual objects or items are returned in an array called items. This is then followed by a URI's array, which indicates to the mobile client SDK where on the server to retrieve the individual objects from in case they expire on the client. As you can see, this URI structure conforms back to the object REST endpoint that you have to create in addition to the collection REST endpoint that we just explained. Then third, you need to include for each item a corresponding ETag value in an ETags array. Now, in order to code this in your MCS custom API node code, you could form this payload by hand coding the JSON payload and HTTP headers. However, to make this simpler, the server side MCS SDK provides the sync object and add item method to do this for you. In using this method, you call it once per item in the collection you need to return. So in the first call here, you can see us passing in the response object as a parameter, so the method can add the second, third, and fourth parameters to the return mobile payload. Essentially, the weather item for Beijing, the URI value to access the Beijing endpoint on MCS, and the E tag as we saw previously. Then, to add the Sydney weather payload, we make another call in a similar fashion to add item that you can see here. In addition, we said that the collection endpoint must include the HTTP header Oracle Mobile Sync Resource Type equals collection to indicate to the client that it has a collection to return. Calling the rec Oracle Mobile Sync add item method will take care of this for us so we don't need to explicitly set this header. Now, the examples here are all for returning multiple objects in a collection. Alternately, if the endpoint we're building is for a single object, such as retrieving the weather for a single city via the URL Mobile Custom Weather API Observation City, in this case you don't need to use the add item method, but rather the set item method. For the set item method, you pass it the response object and just the payload. So in the example here, you can see I'm writing the weather to a variable called item, then writing the item to the set item called below. In addition, by the response set header method, I must set the e-tag, though the set item core will take care of setting the Oracle Mobile Sync response type to item as a HP header for us. Now, in discussing manually setting the headers on the return payload, this brings up a good point to returning sync policies as HP headers to the mobile client. So you might remember in the previous episodes where we discussed sync policies in detail that we talked about sync policies for custom APIs that can be set at three levels, either in the mobile app sync policy file on the client or specified in the actual mobile app source code where we were setting them dynamically by using the policy classes or finally in the server side node code by returning specific HTTP headers. And as we might remember, the server-side policies overrule the dynamic policies on the client, which overrule the mobile sync policy file options. Now, given in this video, we're talking about programming the node code in the custom API code 
in the MCS server itself, this presents a good time to talk about what HTTP headers you can return from the custom API that influence the mobile client SDK and its data offline and sync capabilities. So from the server side, you can set four HTTP headers. And we've already talked about the first one, which was Oracle mobile resource type, where you define if the return payload from the custom API represents a collection or item. The next HTTP header is Oracle Mobile Sync No Store with a true or false value. Now, when this is set to true, this indicates to the mobile SDK that under no circumstances should it cache the data. Now, this is particularly useful for when the server side programmer knows that the data to be retrieved to the mobile client, this particular data is very sensitive in that it shouldn't be stored on the device at all. Maybe if the device gets stolen or the data is uh, the data is time sensitive, okay, the mobile client should not rely on a locally cached copy of that data. It should always fetch the data from the MCS server, regardless if it's offline or online or whatever. The next HTTP header is the Oracle Mobile Sync Expires header. And this tells the mobile client that the fetch data should expire after a specific date. And it uses the RFC 1123 format for this. Now, as you remember from the earlier episodes, the evict policy, a part of the a data offline sync capabilities, means that data doesn't get deleted from the mobile client when it expires. Rather, the data is marked as stale and flagged for update at the next available opportunity. But if the mobile device is offline, it can still continue to use this expired data in you know, the absence of anything else being available. Now, if rather you want to indicate from the server side to the mobile client, it should delete data fetched from the server, you use the final header, Oracle Mobile Sync Evict, with again an RFC 1123 date time instead. So returning to our node examples from previous, where say we're using set item to return the weather for Beijing. If I wanted to ensure the mobile client evicted the data for Beijing on the 12th of January 2016 at 6.30 p.m. UTC time, I simply add another call to res.setHeader with the Oracle Mobile Sync Evict HP header and the UTC date time as you can see here. So there you go. With the compliant endpoints and payloads in place for your custom APIs on the MCS server side, these are then compatible with the client side data offline sync capabilities. So what I hope you'll do is now join us in the next set of episodes. We'll discuss what the client side programmer needs to do in order to work with this whole mechanism. Thanks for joining us. See you in the next episode soon.